page 321. On the headquarters of each local universe are stationed 100 power centers of the fourth order. They function to downstep and otherwise to modify the seven power circuits emanating from the super universe headquarters, thus making them applicable to the services of the constellations and systems. The local astronomical catastrophes of space are a passing concern to these power centers. They are engaged in the orderly dispatch of effective energy to the subsidiary constellations and systems. They are of great assistance to the Creator Sun during the later times of universe organization and energy mobilization. These centers are able to provide intensified lanes of energy, useful for interplanetary communication between important inhabited points. Such a lane or line of energy, sometimes also called an energy path, is a direct circuit of energy from one power center to another power center, or from one physical controller to another controller. It is an individualized stream of power and stands in contrast to the free space movements of undifferentiated energy. It is to ordinary energy as the flow of electricity in a design circuit is to lightning, which is unorganized. And then, of course, on each of our constellations, there are 10 power centers. And in each system, there is one power center. And then there are unclassified centers, which I think are used in unusual circumstances. Let's go back to page 358. Salvington, the headquarters of Nebadon, is situated at the exact energy mass center of the local universe. But your local universe is not a single astronomic system, though a large system does exist at its physical center. Salvington is the personal headquarters of Michael of Nevadon, but he will not always be found there. While the smooth functioning of your local universe no longer requires the fixed presence of the Creator Sun at the capital sphere, this was not true of the earlier epochs of physical organization. A Creator Sun is unable to leave his headquarters world until such a time as gravity stabilization of the realm has been effected through the materialization of sufficient energy to enable the various circuits and systems to counterbalance one another by mutual material attraction. Michael performs a physical function. Michael is able personally to function as a make-weight in the establishment of physical equilibrium. And until he gets the thing in balance, he's anchored on Salvington. He spent a long time on Salvington. What we've been reading about covers that period in local universe history which is bounded by, which began 400 billion years ago and which ended 300 billion years ago. 300 billion years ago, it said, it says that his personal staff arrived on Salvington. Now, I think I know who that means. Let's read about that person staff. And I think now the tertia film will be of great interest to you. These high angels are of record on the super universe headquarters, and despite service in the local creations, technically they are residents of the super universe capitals, inasmuch as they are not native to the local universes. Tertia film are children of the infinite spirit and are personalized on paradise in groups of 1,000. These supernal beings of divine originality and near supreme versatility are the gift of the infinite spirit to the creator sons of God. When a Michael son is detached from the parental regime of paradise and is made ready to go forth on the universe adventure of space, the infinite spirit is delivered of a group of 1,000 of these companion spirits. And these majestic tertiaphim accompany this creator son when he embarks upon the adventure of universe organization. Throughout the early times of universe building, these 1,000 tertiaphim are the only personal staff of the creator son. They acquire a mighty experience as sun assistants during these stirring ages of universe assembly and other astronomical manipulations. 
They serve by the side of the Creator Son until the day of the personalization of the bright and morning star, the firstborn of a local universe. Thereupon, the formal resignations of the Tertiophim are tendered and accepted, and with the appearance of the initial orders of native angelic life, they retire from active service in the local universe and become the liaison ministers between the Creator Son of former attachment and the ancients of days of the super-universe concern. For a long time, though, this is his working core. These tertiophim and the power centers and the creative spirit. Uh, at some time, along about here, Gabriel was created. Uh, we don't know, but Gabriel is not more than 300 billion years old. And we know that he is here when we turn to page 654, because 200 billion years ago, witnessed the progression of contraction and condensation with enormous heat generation in the Andronover Central Cluster, or nuclear mass. Relative space appeared even in the regions near the central mother wheel, mother-son wheel. The outer regions were becoming more stabilized and better organized. Some planets revolving around the newborn suns had cooled sufficiently to be suitable for life implantation. The oldest inhabited planets of Nebadon date from these times. So between 300 and 200 billion years ago, the Tertiophim resigned because Gabriel had appeared. The Seraphic hosts were created. The core of Melchizedek's, Verondedek's, Lenonidek's were created. The life carriers were created. Uh, the entire universe mechanism began to function. Everybody that we know anything about was on the stage of action. One of the, uh, the Union of Days up here. Doesn't he come out with Michael? I don't know. I don't tell know. Much about him. No. I would guess. I would guess that Paradise would recognize this universe whenever native life appeared. If I had to speculate, I would say that the Union of Days would arrive at about the time that Gabriel appeared. We have we some life has appeared out here now. Up until this time, every living being was imported. Gabriel is the oldest native of Nebadon. Anybody older than Gabriel is not a native of Nebadon. He is the firstborn of the local universe. Yes? And when they say about this time, the staff of Michael arrived, now is that staff after the tertiary or was that the tertiary Well, I don't know. I don't know. They're vague in there. They're vague. Maybe the tertiary then. That could be. But at least shortly after that, what is shortly, when we're dealing with hundreds of millions of years, shortly after that, uh, Gabriel appeared, everyone was created. And they created yes, the that's right. And when it says the power centers stay on, yeah. does that refer to the force organizers too? No, that does not. The force organizers retire when the power centers arrive. But at least some of those power centers who came out here and took over from the force organizers are the same power centers as are still working here. We've got we've got 100 fourth order power centers, uh, all stationed on Southington. We've got a thousand fifth order power centers, ten each on each constellation. We've got ten thousand sixth order power centers, one each in each local system. Are they personal? In the third source sense of the word, yes, but not they're not in the Father's circuit. Yeah. These are the are the governing core of the mass of the uh, power of the universe power directors. They are the stationary people. Well differentiate these for me between when I said are they personal you said not in the Father's sense They got free will. Free they can make a choice. They, they are third source personalities, not first source. Yeah. These beings never move. 
They are the stationary members. They're created for a purpose. Right. They get no sense of humor. Oh, they have no ascendant past. They are supremely efficient. And as they say in the in the papers, we we compare the living universe to the human body. But if you only knew about the body of a power center, we could make so much better a comparison. These power centers, the internal organs of these power centers have a kaleidoscopic versatility of adjustment. They can, they can switch the juxtaposition of their heart, liver, and lungs and change the effect of their persons on energy. These are living transformers. And when you look at a big transformer out in the countryside and think of a power center, I think it's an excellent center. I do. Uh -huh. well, you break breaker, the trans has a... Put an electronic brain in there yeah. so that this thing can make primitive choices. I heard, yeah. <laughs> or, or can, can react in a versatile way. Now, these power centers are immobile. They take up a position and they hold it. The next group below them are the master physical controllers. They have no fixed positions. They come and go and are assigned as needed. Is there origin of the things in the spirit? There are origin of the power centers. Oh. The, the master spirits produce the seven supreme power directors and then I think collaborate with them in the production of the power centers. They're not dual at all in their origin. Mm -hmm. Now these physical controllers are all over everywhere. The first of the physical controllers are associate power directors and they too are third source personalities. But below that level, they seem more like living machines. They're highly intelligent, but they do not have free will. You see, these power centers extend all the way out on the edge of paradise. The seven supreme power directors slowly rotate following the super universes. And the physical presence of this power director marks the spiritual presence of the master spirit concern. Just as the father operates physically through paradise in relation to total creation, so does a master spirit operate physically through his associated supreme power director as concerns those physical super universe things which are under his jurisdiction. Now, the power system comes on out. You know there are the Father's worlds, the Son's worlds, and the worlds of the Spirit. On the worlds of the Spirit, the seven worlds circling paradise, which are the worlds of the Spirit, on each one of these worlds is a supreme executive. Each of these worlds is the general office, the paradise general office of a super universe. The name of the seventh world of the infinite spirit in the near regions of paradise is Orvantan. Our super universe was named for that world. The supreme executive of Orvantan is the chief executive officer of the master spirit and he sustains the same relationship to the three ancients of days as the chairman of the board would sustain to a triune president of a corporation. On the worlds of the seven supreme executives, or the worlds of the spirit, there are situated the highest order of the power centers. These are the supreme center supervisors. And again, going back to the organic comparison, these seven supreme executives operate all of the power communication circuits and so forth are rooted through these worlds. As a perfecter of wisdom says, these, these are the worlds on which you see the acme of efficiency. These are worlds he likes to visit because he gets a big charge out of seeing skilled people working at top skills. This is the paradise center of the whole vast intelligence communication network for the super universe of Urbanda. You find every type of being on these worlds. And every circuit 
to Orvandan that is controllable by sub-deity beings clears through this world. And here's what that means to me. Every circuit in our body, every nerve circuit, makes a crossover in the medulla. And this is what gives us body coordination. Everything is associated. This is why this hemisphere of the brain controls this side of the body and vice versa. If we knock this side out, the opposite side of the body ceases to function. Now, in Havona, there are power centers which are not germane to our concept. But coming out to the to the third order of power centers, how many of them are there? There are 1,000 power centers on Uversa. And these are the boys that receive what comes out from paradise at this level and dispatch it to the 100 power centers on every super universe. Well, let's read one more paragraph and break. 100 billion years ago, the nebular apex of condensa condensation tension was reached. The point of maximum heat tension was attained. Things are speeding up. The critical stage of gravity heat contention sometimes lasts for ages. But sooner or later, heat, motion, orbital velocity wins the struggle with gravity. And the spectacular period of sudden dispersion begins. And this marks the end of a secondary career of a space nebula. Now the primary nuclear stage started when the power centers came out here and took over from the force organizers. That's the primary nebular stage. It ends at about when a nebula gets to what we start calling a nebula. A nebula enters the secondary stage when it it's, it's then visible to astronomers like our astronomers. And it's still pretty coherent. It's still pretty much one mass. There are some suns, but this is true only of the outermost regions. And now we're going to witness the beginning of the end of the nebula as we pass from the secondary to the tertiary and finally to the quartan stages. Tune in. Same station, same channel. What is the fate of Andronomy? Will heat win? Will motion win? Or will gravity collapse the whole nebula? Is the work of the Creator Son doomed to failure, or will he crash?
that comes into origin as a result of that cosmic conception. The human mind is the material womb of the soul. The spirit that comes from the father is the invader. And when that invasion takes place in about the fifth year of mortal life, something new begins.